Today, we are talking about how to get started with your Irish genealogy when we come back. Welcome to another episode on Genealogy TV. We're going to jump into that Irish research here in just a moment. But first, if this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget that Genealogy TV has a website at genealogytv.org, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. You can find all kinds of stuff there. And well, you're going to get those links in the show notes below this video. Now on to the Irish genealogy research. Joining us today is Pamela Guy Holland. She is a professional genealogist in Irish and genetic genealogy. She also has a great deal of knowledge about New England, New York, and German research as well. Everything that we talk about in this episode, that's going to be in the description below as well. And well, let's just jump into the interview with Pamela Guy Holland. Well, welcome to Genealogy TV. I am so glad you're here and I am uh, so appreciative of you spending the time to tell us a little bit about Irish uh, genealogy. And well, if somebody is just getting started and they don't really know where to um, really where to get started, I know they have to have a little bit of information here in the United States before they can really jump the pond. But tell us, where do, where do we get started? Well, it is really important to do as much research, um, you know, in the United States, if that's where you're, 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 you are, to, to learn as much as you can about your immigrant ancestor, because it's very important to try to locate uh, a really a specific place in Ireland where your person came from. And the reason for this is that um, many um, Irish immigrants had similar names. They all seem to recycle the names a lot based because of the naming patterns that they would name their children for. And so there's a many same named individuals and that makes it really important that you are working in the particular area where your person came from so that you can make sure that you found the right person. So I always you know, recommend to people that they do as much um, thorough research in U.S. records as possible. You know, you need to find your person in all the census records. You never know. It may give you a county, and then that can be a really good clue to continue with um, that. Um, of course, you need to find, like, all the birth, marriage, and death records. And um, I've seen a lot of people where sometimes maybe they only have an index or a transcription, but it's really important to look at the original record because sometimes it will – have, you know, a parent's name on there. It may have um, some little clue that you need to follow up on. So it's very important to look in obituaries. If it, there, you can find them, you should actually spend a good bit of effort to try to find them um, because they can be a wonderful source of information um, about other family members as well. And they may list or it may name a place in Ireland where your immigrant came from. And the reason that it can be important to look for their family members is that by re researching them, they may name where they came from in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And of course, like, you know, all the other types of records, you know, newspapers, land, probate, all those kinds of things, you know, cemetery records can be, you know, something that you might need to look at. So it's really all of the traditional types of research that um, or what people might do you may need to do even more of it um, in Irish records. Home sources are another, you know, maybe overlooked source. You may have um, letters or diaries, and those could be, you know, they might have some clues about where people were coming from. Um, sometimes Bibles, you know, they may list something in there. Um, and sometimes those mass memorial cards that um, are produced, you know, a year after someone died, they may have some clues in there as well. Well, okay, so I know that there's like several regions within the Irish, you know, is there, is there any major differences between the different, what are they, counties or pair? Uh, well, there's the, you know, the, the, what is the 22 counties, um, but there's, um, there's no difference in the county level records, um, except after 1922 when the, um, the country was split and you have the Republic of Ireland and then Northern Ireland. So after 1922, there, there could be some differences in records then. But um, 
the really what you're looking would hope to find is the um, townland, and the townland is just the smallest unit of land division in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a town. Um, it can a town or a village may be made up of several town lands, and they are vary in size. They could be a few acres. They could be a hundred acres, and um, so you're really kind of looking for that little tiny area where someone lived and it ties them to that specific place. And if you can't find a town land, then um, alternatively a parish would be a really good um, source to have. And um, sometimes when you find a parish, you don't know if it's a civil parish or a Catholic parish, if the person was Catholic. Um, so, and they can, they can have the same name, but sometimes they have different names and sometimes they have different geographical boundaries as well. So um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of research to figure out which you're talking about. And um, then of course, if you don't have that, hopefully at least you can identify a county. Well, I would imagine that this is where uh, cluster genealogy really comes into play because if you've got so many people with the same name or similar names that you're gonna want to, you know, um, try and, and use those family groups. For those at home who may not understand what cluster genealogy is, it's where we're using all the friends and family associates and people around uh, the key person that we're researching to try and help make sure we've got the right person. Because if you've got six different guys by the same name, you got to start adding a lot of data and birth dates and other family members and who they're married to and who mom and dad were and all that kind of stuff to really identify the right person. So, um, you know, I've always heard that when you're doing Irish research that you really want to try and find that location first in mm -hmm. the United States through traditional genealogical uh, records uh, before even attempting uh, to do uh, Irish research over the pond. Now, is that still true or, or has some of the new indexes and databases really helped us out there? Well, it's still definitely true. And people are then, but they're, people are tempted with all these new resources that are available to just kind of like jump in and start searching. And that can cause some problems because say your person was born 1840-ish um, or say 1840 mm -hmm. and you, and he, they were Catholic and you're like, well, I'm just going to search the Catholic church records that are now available. And if you go in and say, you know, your person came from County Cork, or you don't even know where they came from, but let's just say from Cork, and you go in and you search for that person, you know, first you probably may find multiple people of that name. So then, like you say, you need some other information to help you identify which one. But there's an even, I guess, a worse possibility is that many parishes um, they didn't start records in 1840. Maybe they started keeping their church records in yeah. 1850 or 1860. So you're not searching a complete set of records. And so you, you may, your person may have come from one of those parishes where the records started later. And if you haven't identified that that's where they came from and you find someone else by the right name and say the right age and maybe the right parent names, you could be finding the wrong person and saying, that's my person. Good tip. Good tip. So, uh, okay. So if somebody is looking, where would they go look for these records? Are they going to be in a variety of places or are they, is there one place that would have a lot for us or? Well, there's not one um, provider that has everything. Mm -hmm. So um, the church records, which everyone is very interested in um, the, you can, they have been indexed on Ancestry and Find My Past, um, so you can get to them that way. You can also get to them um, if you know the actual, if you don't want to search them, you can actually browse them on the National Library of Ireland website. They have browsable images there. Mm -hmm. So you could go into that particular parish and then you can filter down to a baptism on a, in a particular year and a particular month. And then you can actually like look through the registers to, to try to find the um, person that way. There's a Roots Ireland website and that's a subscription site and they have indexed many records. Um, many of the other, well, they haven't done all of Ireland but they've done a, a good bit of them. And one of the nice things about their indexes 
are that they typically were working from the actual physical registers rather than the microfilm. So sometimes it was easier for them to read them. So they may have a better um, index. And then because they had the actual parish registers, sometimes they um, continued read, um, indexing them past about 1880 when a lot of the microfilms were stopped um, being filmed of them. So sometimes you can find later records in them. So is there anything unique on maybe uh, Family Search as well? Well, Family Search does have a Family Search does have a good number of records. They do not have all of the church records indexed on there, and they do not have all the microfilms of the church records, but they do have some selections of them. So occasionally you will, it's always good to try to search there because you may find, you know, something that, that gives you um, a clue to, as to where the person lived or, you know, just a little bit more information. So they, they are a good source as well. But um, typically if I'm looking for someone in church records, I would use either find my search uh, find my past or ancestry or roots ireland now there is another um, site called um, irishgenealogy.ie and um, but they have only done the church records for most of county cork and Kerry and parts of dublin and those are typically the places that roots ireland has not covered so they almost um, cover all of Ireland together for them. And the irishgenealogy.ie is free. That's a free site. Mm. So I, my, um, some of the research I do is in County Cork for my husband's family. So I just would use the irishgenealogy.ie because you kind of like don't have all those other counties that you have to filter out. Do, do all the locations or all the counties have both civil and church records? I think you mentioned yes. earlier. So, um, civil registration began in 1864, and it was, you know, that's when it started, and it's not necessarily that everyone complied right away, but, you know, within a few years, it was, it was pretty good, and um, so that was civil registration of births, marriages, and deaths. That's what I was so going to ask. Were, <laughs> yes, that, those were what they were. Now, they were non-Catholic marriages um, were civil registration began earlier, but that was mostly for Church of Ireland. So for the majority of people, 1864 is, is the date that we're talking about. Unfortunately, so when you're dealing with the Catholic records, you're looking on the Catholic parish level. When you're looking at the civil registration, you need to look um, at a registration district. And that's quite different wow. than the parishes. And so those can be very confusing for people. So what happened, um, they had set up these poor law unions and they were these areas within a 10 or 12 mile radius of market town. So they pretty much, the market towns kind of were evenly distributed throughout Ireland. You know, it was where people went on market day to go sell their produce. And so these were kind of a local area where lots of things were going on. The courts were often in that area as well. And so they set up these poor law unions and they would have um, workhouses and poor relief, especially during the famine. So these areas then became the administrative district for when civil registration began. So people were supposed to go into these civil registration areas and register the, um, the events. So the, that's a different set of records right there? It is, it's quite a different set of records. And so they're indexed um, by the civil registration district or the sometimes they're called a superintendent registrar's district. And they're basically the same area as a poor law union. So you may hear those names used interchangeably. Okay. And uh, so when someone was born or when someone died, a family member was supposed to go to the registrar and provide the information. When someone was married, the priest or the officiant would go and provide the information. Civil records, they're all available for free. And they're available on that irishgenealogy.ie site. On, they have a different um, tab for civil records. And they've all been, um, I shouldn't say all, the majority of them have been um, digital images are available there. And um, they do have a cutoff similar to like um, records here in the US, like 100 years for births and um, I think 75 for marriages and 50 for deaths, that type of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you know, periodically they'll release a few more. Um, so typically you would go into there and search by name, the person's name, 
and that registration district. So you kind of okay. have to know what the registration district is. And then you will get, you know, a list of things and then you can look at the different images to find your person. Now, I know that they had some census records too. Are these the same that you're talking about with the civil records or no? No, the civil so records you were, were talking about were vital records, right? right? Right. So we're talking about vital. So the civil yeah. registration would be the vital record. So they they started taking census records quite early and they were quite detailed. Unfortunately, almost all of them up until 1901 were destroyed. Yeah. Either when <laughs> um a big fire that they had during the Civil War in 1922, um it destroyed the four courts area and the um a lot of records were destroyed then, although some records had been pulped during the First World War as well. So um the first real complete census is 1901. And then they've also released the 1911 census. They did not do one in 1921 because they were in the midst of a civil war. But they did one a few years later, but that one's, um, this is to be a hundred year um, thing. So they haven't, we haven't quite got there yet. So we're eagerly awaiting the next ones to be released. All right. And, um, those records are free and they're available um, at the National Archives of Ireland. I'm feverishly taking notes here. I do know that you are providing us with a, a wonderful uh, PDF uh, that people will be able to download Yes. Uh, uh, to help with all of these links and some of the details. And, and I really thank you for that. How about newspapers? Um, they, there are newspapers. They're not quite as useful as maybe U.S. newspapers because um, they tended to be the more in the more affluent or larger urban areas. And also the people that were talked about in them usually were the more well-to-do. So the smaller tenant farmers, you wouldn't normally find them in the newspapers. Although once you're getting close to 1900, if you still have people there, you know, there more obituaries are being, you know, produced on a mass basis. So you may find them as well there, but they're kind of always worth a look. You never, never know what you might find in there. And um, there's not really they're kind of scattered around. There are some on Find My Past. Um, you can get some through um, Irish newspapers website. And then there's a Brit, um, some through the British um, website because they were kept in Britain because, you know, Ireland was part of Britain until 1922. Excellent. All right. So let's think about graves for a moment. Are there, mm -hmm. are there any, uh, you know, places we could go, like we have find a grave. Is there? They do uh, have um, a number of, um, Grave. Well, they have some local areas that are trying to preserve their graves and have put them on. You will find some people who have put cemeteries on find a grave. So they're always worth looking. Um, unfortunately, because a lot of people, they couldn't afford headstones. So it wasn't really until maybe in the late, you know, closer to 1900 that headstones were really kind of being put up, that people could afford them at that point. So a lot of times it was just you know, a rock that was marking the family area. And the family knew where the area was, so they knew where to bury their people. But, you know, it's not helpful to us because we want to find names and dates and all that kind of stuff. Of course, there's the Church of Ireland, that was the established church, the state church, the Protestant church. And um, they have church records. They're not, they're just beginning to digitize some of those, so they're not as readily available. Although Roots Ireland has sometimes gone into those records to look for those. Of course, unfortunately, one of the things that they suggested was that please store your Church of Ireland records in our wonderful repository in Dublin. It's many were destroyed in 1922 as well. So, <laughs> Not all, but some. Well, so thankfully, nowadays, we have backups and copies and cloud service and all kinds of places right. that hopefully we won't be losing any more records going forward. So um, one of the th things that um, Irish people use for a census substitute is Griffiths Valuation. And um, that was a land, it was taken between 1847 and 1864. It varied, they kind of started in one part of the country and worked their way down. That's why there's a, um, a range of years. And they were valuing the land so that they could get a proper amount to tax. 
tax the people that were on the land. It's always and about so, the money, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all about the money. That's right. So you'll find typically um, the person that was responsible for the land that was being occupied, similar to a head of household in you know the earlier census records. And these can be very useful because they can really um, tie someone to a particular plot of land. And um, sometimes that's the only way that you can like get further back in um, the records since there weren't the census records. And then there was a, um, earlier than that, there was what they call the tithe allotment, which was a way to tax people for, to support the Church of Ireland. So everyone that was occupying land um, was required to pay a particular, you know, tithe to the Church of Ireland. So the tithe allotment was a way to value the land that the people were on and figure out how much they owed. So that's another census substitute. And those were taken in the 1820s to 1830s. And um, th those records are all, um, both sets of records are available for free in a variety of places online. This is well, fabulous. One site I think that everyone should be aware of because it's like, I use it all the time. And it's um, John Grenham who wrote the, the standard book for Irish researchers, which is um, Tracing Your Irish Ancestors by John Grenham. Um, he has a website and it is a fantastic website. It's just johngrenham.com. Um, and he has, it's almost like having his book um, online. And he has interactive maps, so you can search the maps for Catholic parishes. You can search the maps for the civil parishes. You can search the maps for the registration districts. You can um, look for townlands, and, and it's just a wonderful site. And he's able to really help you figure out these different jurisdictions and where to look for the records. Wonderful. I can't wait to dig into that as well. I will certainly... Um put a link for that in the in the description mm -hmm. as well if there's any land mapping maybe you know did people well, the, own land? The, with Griffiths um when you if you find someone in Griffiths valuation there are maps that are associated so you can find the um actual little house that the person was living in so if you were to look on Griffiths valuation on the far um left hand column there'll be a map reference number it may be like five big A, little A, or something like that. And um, the associated maps, which are on um, askaboutireland.ie, that's one of the free sites where Griffiths is. Um, Find My Past also has um, Griffiths on there and the maps, but they're not linked together um, nicely. So you have to kind of search the different databases separately, but on Ask About Ireland, they do have the maps are right there and you can click on the map and open up the map and zoom in and find that little five big A, little A and see where that particular area was. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. This is like huge. All right. So if people want to find you, how do they do that? <laughs> Well, I have a website, genealogybypamholland.com. And I think I saw that you have a Facebook page. And, uh, I do. I do have a Facebook and, page. And I yes. think you're on Pinterest? or Yes, I'm other? on Pinterest as well. <laughs> See, I did a little homework. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been really helpful, and uh, I can't wait to get into it myself. But uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll uh, come back and visit us again. Sure, yes. If you know you want to dig into one particular topic, we can do that. Oh, that was awesome. All right. Well, I learned a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or other places to research that were not mentioned in this video, put them in the comment sections below. Just know that any uh, web addresses that you put in there, I'll have to approve before they can be seen. All right. Well, if that worked for you, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. There are more videos on the screen for you right now that may be of interest to you. So it is time for you to go find your Irish ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.